So Ryan, here we are, glorious day at the Craven meeting, beginning of 2019, spring in the air. Is there a spring in your step? Do you feel as up for it and as good as you have done for the last few years? Obviously this time of year it's always um, very interesting, the horses coming out and um, yeah, hopefully a lovely bunch of horses to look forward to ride this year and um, uh, you know, the next, next it, things start happening very quickly now. We'll be back here in two weeks time for the guineas and before we know it we'll be at Epsom and Nascot so uh, things happen quickly, there's not too much time to sit and think about it but yeah, obviously the big race is not far away now. I was having a a reminder of your CV. I don't think there's ever been a jockey who's had such a varied list of big race winners across the globe. Japan Cup, Melbourne Cup, seven of the top eight races in Hong Kong, every British classic at least once, multiple Breeders' Cup winners of all different generations and distances. What is it that still motivates you? What gets you out of bed in the morning and looking forward to the day ahead? You ha have to keep going. I think everybody does. Um, I wouldn't give that any real thought. I know I'm very lucky to ride the, the horses that um, I've ridden throughout my career and, and lucky to ride the ones I'm riding now and hopefully ones in the future. Um, I, I've always enjoyed riding races and um, that's, that's what I enjoy most, just, just being, being in a race and uh, you know, I, I, I enjoy that part of it and I, I, I enjoy working with the people I work with. So it's more that than basking in the glory of loads of triumphs and lists of big races. It's not that that turns you on, it's the day-to-day -day doing of it that excites you. We all have to do something and um, I'm very fortunate I enjoy race riding and I, I, I'm very fortunate people I work for and, and people I have worked with and um, it's an enjoyable thing to be doing and uh, yeah I'm, I'm, very, very lucky to have um, been involved with, with you know, with, with the people and the horses I have been. You're, you're renowned for being sort of putting a premium on, on physical fitness, keeping yourself in, in good shape. How important do you think that is in terms of keeping your mind in the right place for, for riding big winners? Um, I, I don't know. I think it's, I, I just always felt, um, you know, it's, as a sportsman you have to be in good shape and um, it's something I noticed very early on um, but you know some of the dads that rode for my dad and, and things I, I just thought fitness was a, an important part and um, you know obviously doing our job you, you want to keep the weight stable and I, I like to keep my weight as level as I can without having to do too many extremes, so that, that's that's what I'd be thinking about really. In terms of race riding itself, what aspect of it do you most enjoy? Um, I most enjoy getting a feel of a horse that can do something special. That that's that's always the uh, the thing you're looking for: the horse that can run up here and take you down the hill on the bridle, you know to hit the rising ground in, in, in the guineas or something and that's what you're, you're looking for. You're looking for a horse that can, you know, just excite you and, um, you know, they're, they're hard to find but, you know, when they do come along, it's, it's fantastic. Can you remember the first time in your career where you got off a horse and thought, oof, I've never felt that before? That, that was a completely different feeling. I've, I've gone to the next level on, on something. Um, Probably the is a lovely old horse, and Milton Bradley's actually called the Tatling. He was he, he was grand horse. Yeah, he he was. Remember the first time I rode him in a handicap at York? I thought he was a bit different. I, I was only probably nineteen at the time, though. And what was that feeling? No, I just thought this is this is different to whatever else I'd been riding that year. You know, first year riding, so. Was it pure speed or an ability to change gear, an ability yeah, quicken, to yeah. pick up for you when quicken. you asked? Yeah. And that's something you hadn't felt before? Yeah. And in terms of the, the horses you then started to ride after that, I got quite a distinct memory of interviewing you after the Hungerford Stakes on Paco Boy for Richard Hannon. It was probably one of the best horses you rode for him in that little period of your, your career. And I, I'd never seen you so animated. You were absolutely buzzing 
after yeah, that. Was, that. That turn of foot and acceleration that, that yeah, he, he had was... He, he was he was a special horse. He was he used to be a bit tricky at home. So I'd rode him a lot at, at home. And yeah, he was, um, he was a bit of a freak really. He wasn't expected to be anything that good, but um, yeah, he, he was a lovely horse with a real turn of foot and yeah, a little bit different to most horses. You develop that affection for these horses because you're involved with them on a day-to-day -day basis as well and it's always struck me that you enjoy being part of that team. You're not just a, a free agent, you know, a self-employed machine who just goes out and churns out winners because that's your job. You, you like being part of the process. Is that, is that a, a fair observation? Yeah, I think it's, it's more interesting when you see how they all develop and you know, you hopefully you're doing the right things for the long term future of the horse and you'll get the best out of them throughout their career, you know, and hopefully give them good careers that, that can last a bit longer. What, what do you think is the most important aspect in making a trainer jockey relationship successful? Uh, I would say just trust between both people, really. Yeah, if, you, if you have good trust and you're both on the same page and, and you're both working together, and 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 for the uh, you know for, for for the good of you both, and it'll be it'll be successful. You talk about the the element of trust and the development of a relationship between a jockey and a trainer. Why has the relationship between you and Sir Michael Stout worked so well? Um, look, I, I've been riding for Michael since oh five, really. You know, um, and yeah, I, I think I think we have. Good trust between us, and um, I, I understand. Well, I'm tr learning to understand what what he expects, and um, <laughs> you know how he wants his horses, how he wants to develop his horses, and um, he's always put great faith in me, and he's always, um, you know, he's always tried to to help me in every way he could, and give me the right advice at the right moments and you know obviously I'd be eternally grateful for everything I've learned from him. It's quite funny that you've been riding from I think for 12, 13 years something like that on and off and you're saying you're still you're still learning how to read him how to kind of intuit what he says he's a he's a fascinating character. But he's, he's a lovely man but he's a very smart man and, and so sometimes it takes a while to catch up. And as regards the, the last few years, which have been so productive, and particularly riding for, for Bally Doyle and, uh, and riding for Aiden, um, he, he was saying the other day that you were going to go over a bit more and ride some of the horses and just get more of a feel for them. Is that something you're, you're quite keen to do so you can establish that, that rapport with them that you were talking about, that you, you enjoy that building process? Uh, yeah, look, um, I've always had a real good relationship with Aiden. Um, we've always understood each other, I think. And you know, any time you go to Bally Doyle, it's always uh, it's a it's just a unique place, and it's it's very different to anywhere else. And uh, they've they've a great team there, and and um, obviously Aiden has everything the way he wants it, and it's. Uh, it's, it's very, it's very special to be a part of that, really. In terms of your own standing in the sport, you are an established senior rider now, as I say, and even even though you're only in your in your mid thirties, do you feel do you feel more of a responsibility towards the sport now, as a person and as a rider, than you did 10, 15 years ago? I, I think we're always just wanting the best for the sport and hope, hoping that everything goes. The, the way we believe or, or the way we hope is the right way and um, all I think is hopefully everyone in, within racing can realise that it's got to be a, a big sort of, um, it's got to be very much united from, you know, especially like the horsemen and the race horses and, 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 and obviously the owners. Um, and hopefully we can push the sport in, in the right direction for, for the long-term good of it. We still have fantastic sport. You see the crowds on the big meetings and um, I believe there's real good interest still. I, I just hope we all keep
keep working, but what's best for the sport going forward and um, yeah, that be that's, that's all I really want is just hopefully we can keep improving, making the sport better and, and hopefully safeguarding it for the future.